You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. LSU is back on the practice field today, uh, Tuesday. And as I understand, I was looking at your Twitter, they had a pretty big visitor list today. Is is this um it's just spring break for high school kids they were able to get on over? Is that why, like on the calendar, that it fell that they had this many visitors on campus today? Yeah, it can be usually a mix of things. For instance, Lamar Brown was there out of U High. A lot of those kids sometimes when they have open periods or whatever it is, they can come over and watch and uh look, he's a five star now and top what three overall prospect on on three for next year so uh the city of baton rouge stacked with him and blaine bradford uh over at catholic hey. uh, as two, yeah two top 10 players nationally regardless of position uh and the number one player in the country regardless of position plays at st aug uh, d lineman and jakeem stewart so to get guys like lamar is always good but yes they had uh, a number of kids come in a handful from out of state that have offers that they're recruiting and uh, probably the most noteworthy would have been um, Onus Kenan Banny, who is coming out of Columbia in South Carolina. Uh, so USC's on him. North Carolina's been on him hard. Uh, but a number of SEC teams. Tennessee's been in the mix uh, as well, uh, and LSU. And he made the drive over for his spring break from uh, South Carolina down to LSU, and that was his visit. And uh, spent, I think, three days. He was there for practice today, and then he was going to leave. So um, as we see kind of the rebuild towards DBU and and he got to to hang out with Jabori Antoine, who is LSU's current, you know, of the rising seniors, their cornerback commitment, the one. Uh, but he's a top ten corner nationally. He's coming out of Westgate in New Iberia, a school that uh had seen some guys leave the state for Alabama and Texas and now uh you've landed their premier players commitment and uh is I think he's right now Matt, the number two player in Louisiana. So uh, good to get both those guys uh, there on campus because, as we all know, Corey Raymond's back, and the job is go get corners. Yeah, is it? I would assume it's safe to say that a lot of this influx of talent visitors is a direct uh, correlation with Corey being back. But can you talk a little more about uh, Onus Cannon Banny, if you would? Um, and because Shay, I think this is the first time we've talked about him here. Can you just elaborate a little bit there on, on him as a prospect and, and that whole recruitment? Yeah, again, he's a kid coming out of South Carolina, 6'2", 170 as a junior in high school. So with Corey being back, he kind of already got that feel again for, yep, okay, here come the 6'2 guys with long arms and can turn and run, uh, and that's what he is. But uh, is a guy that, and this is where personnel departments pay off, uh, uh, off-field coaches, everyone who's kind of watching film of every kid out there, you'll remember a year ago, they were the very first team to offer Ethan Calloway out of North Carolina, mm. uh, and he ends up being a top 100 player, and he committed to LSU, and he was the one signee from the furthest away, but he said, hey, look, y'all were on me from the start, uh, and LSU did that uh, with Conan Banny, uh, Bobby Barham, one of their off-field guys. Uh, Onus has told me he was kind of that first guy to reach out, they looked at him, they offered him, and so that's going to put LSU in a spot where they can battle the North Carolina, South Carolina for a kid that uh, is on the East Coast and has both those schools kind of badly wanting him. I mean, this is South Carolina is a talented high school football state, and we're talking about a guy who's ranked in the top five. So those schools want him badly. Uh, Shay Dixon's with us. He's on Twitter at Shay Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger. Uh, every week when you're here, I feel like I, I almost out of obligation to ask about James Simon because it feels like. We're all just waiting for his commitment to pop. Of course, that's the running back from Louisiana. Any updates there at all? Yeah, he made his LSU visit first. He's on a string of visits uh, right now, uh, which is also a combination of spring break where he's making a handful, and then he's got others scheduled for weekends. Um, and we were watching to see, okay, does he pop after staying at LSU for multiple days? And instead, uh, they've chosen, hey, let's go ahead and see this out. Uh, they went to BAM at the end of March. Um, I believe this weekend he's at A&M. Um, or maybe switch it up and went to Notre Dame, but then you've got Texas, Miami. Um, he's from North Louisiana. Louisiana. He's going to pop into La Tech for their big, big visit weekend. So by the end of April, he said he should probably be done with, you know, checking out his top schools or, you know, schools he really wanted to go see maybe that he hadn't yet, like a Notre Dame. Um, but I think that by give it another month or so, I think as we get into uh, the month of May and, and certainly 
camp season in June that a guy like that uh, shuts things down. Um, Luck, they went to the state title. He was one of the best players in the state. Uh, more often than not, Matt, those Louisiana kids uh, shut it down before their senior year. Then they turn the focus to, in his case, Calvary Baptist or whatever it might be. So I would think this one, at some point in the next couple of months, we hear a resolution on, and I still think LSU is the team to beat as a, a top 10 running back, which would give them, gosh, and obviously rankings change, but the number one running back in Harlan Berry and the number eight in James Simon. So uh, for Frank Wilson to be able to have them both in Louisiana, I think it's a big deal. Uh, Shay, speaking of A&M, um, saw Keelan Moses went over there. I think we talked about that. He was going to go over to A&M with his brother on a visit. And so I saw a lot of the reports coming out of there that A&M was kind of putting on the hard press. Uh, is there any reason at all whatsoever to be concerned about about Keelan Moses' commitment? No, he would be a shocker yeah. to see go anywhere but LSU just because he has said, look, I'll be that cornerstone piece. Uh, but at the same time, remember, his younger brother is getting recruited right now. So he went on the, you know, he got offered by AM. and uh, And so he's going to do things, I think, where, you know, go on a visit with your brother or whatever it might be. And he's got ties to that A&M staff. They were recruiting him for as long as anyone, you know, until because he's been a national name for a while up in, up until his commitment and through it. But I'll tell you right now, and look, we know how it is that first year in the Brian Kelly era, the first full year, they did very well. Top five class They had to put things together in a hurry then. So maybe not the best comparison here, but it's tough with a new staff and they're not ranked in the top 15 right now. They only have four commits. Uh, their highest rated commit isn't even a top 150 player uh, on the on three industry rankings. Uh, and so far all four of their commitments are out of Texas. So, I think that Mike Elko and that almost completely new staff is really just trying to get a feel for things. And uh, I don't see them being much of a threat in the end for a guy like Keelan or really look, James Simon. Yes, he's being courted by him, but there aren't many guys left. Only two James Simon and Corey Adams out of Edna Carr who have LSU offers in Louisiana and aren't already committed to LSU. So uh, I just don't think A&M is going to be a school this cycle that comes in and really makes any waves in Louisiana. Jay, there was another uh, prospect on campus for a visit, a local kid, that I wanted to ask you about. Now, he's a young guy, but I'm asking because of the position he plays and, quite honestly, just because of like word-of-mouth stories I've heard. Uh, it's Elijah Haven, who's a class of 2027 prospect. He was a freshman in high school, as you well know. But he's a quarterback over at Dunham, and I've heard Terrio rave about him. and like He's he's next, right? He's going to be the next biggest thing. Um what 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 can you tell us? It's so 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 early, but it feels like this is one that we're going to be talking about for four years. So what what can you tell us there about Elijah Haven? I mean, he's a guy at, as a freshman in high school, six four, uh, you know, one eighty. He doesn't look <laughs> doesn't look anything like a freshman uh, playing over there at Dunham, but he has uh, started this past year, played very well. So just think, he's got three years of high school development in front of him, and. The feel, and look, this is so tough, quarterbacks especially, because nationally, and we're talking LSU recruits at a high level, obviously, at quarterback. They have the number one quarterback in the country committed. But these guys, by their junior year, they all start. By their sophomore year, maybe it's 50% of them are starting. Freshmen, you just don't know how many in this class like around him are also going to pop up in the coming years and be good. But early on, a lot of people think, hey, look, of the guys that are starting as freshmen, this kid looks like one of the better ones in the country. Um, he's got Ole Miss, Florida, Texas Tech, Miami. They've all offered um, good basketball player. I mean, just all around really good athlete. And a guy that Joe Sloan and them went and watched play basketball. They've seen him play football. They've had him at camp. They have him on visits. He and his dad were there today. So, um, as always, they take their time with Louisiana kids. You don't offer a kid and they never want to go back on it. But uh, I would be surprised if a day didn't come when, uh, Joe Sloan and the staff offer uh, Haven, and it wouldn't really be a surprise to anyone considered uh, probably the waves he's going to make in Baton Rouge in the next three years. Is he the next Zadok Dinkelman? That, no, did not happen. <laughs> wasn't he like, no, no, they, no, this kid started in front of freshman. I don't think Dinkelman had ever started a game before when he got offered and committed. <laughs> he was like in eighth grade, he was playing JV ball. <laughs> so for those that don't remember, and Shafe, remind me if my if my memory is uh, hazy here. Dinkelman was Ty Detmer's is Ty Detmer's nephew, who LSU offered and he committed like in the eighth grade, 
And then he just never really materialized. I think he maybe ended up going to like a junior college or like a D2 school. Is that, do I remember correctly? Yeah, he went to Texas A&M Commerce, maybe it was. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so let's hope we're not talking about the next Zadig Dinkelman. Let's hope this is the next uh, uh, Bryce Underwood. Something like that would be great. Um, there you go. All right, Shay, uh, before we let you go, uh, and of course, Shay Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger on Twitter at Shay Dixon. You want recruiting news? He's the best. That's where you go. Um, what calendar? What are we looking at here? Uh, obviously, with the spring game, you know, less than two weeks away. Yeah, they're going to have one more private visit weekend where guys come in this weekend for the scrimmage, and then they'll have a number of guys in uh, for the spring game. Um, obviously, you battle a lot of teams who kind of play that weekend and have spring games and want guys to come in, but they'll have a good visitor list. I think right now we're all watching a class that has gone back and forth with Ohio State as the number one or two teams in the co- you know classes in the country and are excellent, You know, both of them recruiting at a high clip. But LSU, Matt, has 11 commits. All of them almost are on offense, except maybe two or three. I guess three total are uh, on defense. So when does the defense kind of run start? And I think that the correlation between replacing your whole defensive staff and being low on kind of getting out of the gates kind of is a correlation that makes sense. They're feeling it all out. So my prediction is the next wave is D-line and, and defensive backs when it comes to commitments. He is Shay Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger. Follow him on Twitter at Shay Dixon. You're the best. Thanks, man. Appreciate it as always. Thanks, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.